Hey, have you ever wondered why whenever we visit a website for the first time, we always get welcomed with a nice little box like this? It's easy to figure out. Let's just read what it says. So, we, the publisher, and a select group of trusted partners, they need our consent to process personal data, such as standard information sent by a device. So, they must be referring to stuff like uh, the browser I'm using, the language, probably the IP address, right? But it does not stop there because they might use precise geolocation data and actively scan the device. This sounds creepy, right? But you know what? It's okay because they're just gonna share it with a, a trusted group of partners. So let's see this list of trusted partners. Look at the scroll bar. I mean, seriously? I mean, look, that's incredible. But so wh why, do, why do these people need my data? What are they gonna do with my data? Why, why do I need to share this data with them? But you know what, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm just gonna accept everything and proceed. Accept, no. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Did it ever happen to you that you just finished reading a review to that fancy new camera you like to buy, then switch to Instagram stories and after a few swipes, bang, there it is. The ad for that precise camera. Have you ever wondered how does Instagram know that you'd like to buy that precise camera? Well, the answer is cookies. Yes, but, but what are cookies? How, how do sites use them to track you? Is your privacy at risk? How can you protect yourself? Well, let's find out. Cookies have been around since the 90s and probably they get their name from fortune cookies, those little biscuits with a message inside. The cookies we're talking about here are in fact small files that get stored on your computer when you visit a website. Say you open Chrome or Safari, type Amazon.com and hit enter. What happens is that your browser goes to the server on which the website is hosted and requests for a page. As the server replies to the request, along with the content of the page like text and images, it also includes a little file that gets stored on your computer. This file contains an identifier, a unique number associated to your computer. Next time you navigate to that same site again, your computer, along with the request for a page, will also send back the cookie. This way, the server can recognize your computer and reply with a personalized content. Companies like Facebook or Google use cookies to keep track of your navigation across sites. What searches you make, what pages you visit, how much time you spend on a page, and what products you like. Yes, but how do they do that? Well, let's use the same example as above. You go to Amazon.com, the server replies with the content of the page, text and images, plus the cookie. Since Amazon has struck a partnership with Facebook, this time the page also includes a shiny button called Share on Facebook. This button is served by Facebook servers, so as your computer requests for the page, also Facebook sets its cookie. Voila! Now Facebook knows that you like to buy a camera. You don't even need to click the share button or be logged in into Facebook. The cookie will be set anyway. So next time you visit their website, they know precisely what kind of ad they need to show you. The business of online ads is a big deal. Just to put it into perspective, a US digital ad market is worth around $130 billion. Facebook and Google combined account for more than 50% of it. That's serious money. And that's why those guys are very serious when it comes to collecting your data. <laughs> the information that can be fetched range from uh, the computer you're using, preferred language, uh, IP address, but also geolocation, email address, telephone number, and others. All of this information can be fed as data points to build very sophisticated profiling models that can be used to accurately target ads. 
When implemented at the scale of giants like Google, Facebook and Amazon, these models can become very accurate at predicting user behavior. They might even eventually become so precise that they will be able to predict what you will want even before you actually want it. But if cookies are so shady, can we just get rid of them altogether? Well, we could, but it would make our interaction with the sites we visit absolutely dreadful. Without cookies, in fact, we would need to log in each and every time we visit a page, even if we just move to a different section of the same site. Shopping carts would not work because the site will not be able to remember what we wanted to buy as we move across pages. There would be no way to save and remember user preferences, so we would be forced to input them each and every time. These kind of cookies that I just described and that make our lives better as we navigate through our favorite sites are called first-party cookies. It is because they are directly set by the site we're visiting. The other kind of cookies that are generally used to keep track of user behavior are called third-party cookies. This is because they're not set by the site we're visiting, but by advertising partners. In reality, there is nothing inherently dangerous or sketchy about cookies. Even third-party cookies, in fact, are useful in general. Advertising supports a wide variety of services we use every day. In fact, some say, if I am to be presented with an ad, it is probably better that it is a personalized one rather than a random one. What do you think? So far, we've just focused on cookies, but cookies only work in browsers and as we surf the web. So how about apps? They cannot track us with apps, right? Well, <laughs> they actually can. Both iOS and Android devices are assigned a unique identifier called advertising ID. Pretty much like cookies, these IDs are sent to advertisers and other parties to track users' behavior and usage patterns across apps. Should we just give up and provide our personal data to advertising corporations as they systematically and relentlessly track our behavior at their please? Well, no. The good news is that during the last few years, authorities have posed their attention on the way corporations collect and process personal data. In May 2018, the European Union issued a set of regulations under the name of GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation. This body of laws is aimed at protecting European citizens' personal data and poses a strong attention on consent. Under this regulation, by no means companies can collect and process any piece of personal data without the explicit consent from the user. In addition, data processors are required to clearly state for which purpose they are collecting the data and who they're sharing this data with. That is the main reason why around that date, all of those annoying pop-ups started to surface around the web. Other countries follow suit with their own regulation. UK with the Data Protection Act, California with the Consumer Privacy Act, and many others such as Canada, uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, Japan, India, Brazil, and so on. Also, awareness of the general public is on the rise and the demand for transparency when it comes to uh, the collection and processing of personal data is stronger than ever. This circumstance led to some significant decisions in the tech world. Since September 2019, Firefox blocks third-party cookies by default. The same thing goes for Apple's Safari from May 2020, and Google Chrome will follow somewhere in 2022. And it does not stop there. Apple has announced that starting from this spring, they will roll out an iOS update that will force developers to ask for permission to track you. Users will be prompted to opt into tracking in apps with a pop-up like this. Facebook says this is the final blow at small businesses already wounded by the pandemic that are struggling to stay afloat and that depend on ads to sustain their service. 
Facebook says Apple is forcing these businesses to turn to subscriptions and other kinds of in-app payments for revenue. Apple, on the other hand, simply says that the users should have the choice over the data that is collected about them and how it is used. What do you think? Is Facebook right or does Apple have a point? That is all for today. I'm Francesco Fusco and this is Decode, the only place in the world where we take reality and decode it for you, so you don't have to do it on your own. If you like today's video, please subscribe and ring that bell. Thanks for watching, see you guys in the next one. Cheers!